Welcome to ECE 341 Random Processes, lecture number 15, Normal Distributions. Now the normal distribution, also known as the Gaussian distribution, is probably the most important probability distribution. Almost everything fits a normal distribution. Class averages, height of people, IQ scores, and so on are all normally distributed. What a normal distribution looks like is the bell-shaped curve you're probably very familiar with. Part of the reason it's so important is the central limit theorem, which is coming up soon. The central, theorem, the central limit theorem states that if you sum a random variable together with certain loose restrictions, the resulting distribution converges to a normal distribution. So basically, if you add a whole bunch of things together, it becomes normal. Plus, if you take a normal distribution, add it to a normal distribution, the result is a normal distribution. So what that means is that everything converges to a normal distribution, and once you get there, you're stuck. You'll still stay with a normal distribution. That's part of the reason almost everything converges to a normal distribution, and the reason that normal distributions are so common. Now, to start with, let's start with the probability density function and moment generating function. The way you write a normal distribution is distributed as n, meaning normal, with two parameters, the mean and variance. The PDF of a normal distribution follows this function. What that does is that's, that's the bell curve. Uh, e to a negative number it goes to zero. When this is zero, it's one. And so you get this bell-shaped curve. At zero, it's a peak, and then drops off. The moment generating function is this guy. We'll use the moment generating function to calculate the mean and variance. First, the zeroth moment just tells you that you have a valid function. The zeroth moment of your moment generating function is 1, meaning it is valid. The first moment is the first derivative with respect to s, evaluated at s equals 0, and that gives you mu. So the mean of a normal distribution is mu. The second moment is the second derivative at 0, gives you mu squared plus sigma squared. The variance is the second moment minus the first square of the first moment, which is sigma squared. A um, couple examples of normal distributions. There's a uh, neat thing about the internet is you get all sorts of data. To Hector Airport, I can tell you this is the high for the month since 1942 in Fargo. If I, let's see, where's the back button? Ah, there it is. I can also give you the monthly average temperature since 1942. I can give you the rainfall month by month since 1942. Any of those will have a normal distribution, roughly normal distribution. For example, the temperature, it's got a mean, it's got a standard deviation. If I plug that into a normal distribution curve, this is what the PDF looks like for the high temperature for the month of June in Fargo, North Dakota. The mean is 91.79, and the standard deviation is 4.36. With that, I can answer certain questions like, what's the probability that the high will be more than 100 degrees this year? This is asking, what's the area to the curve to the right of 100? So if we go back over here, I've got a normal distribution. The probability that the temperature will be more than 100 is this area, the area to the right. To do that, I can use a very useful uh, website called StatTrack. So I've got a StatTrack, and go down here for a normal distribution. Thinking, thinking, thinking. I can put in the mean the standard deviation. Say I have a mean of 91.79. It has a standard deviation of 4.36. And I want to find the area to the left of 100. What's the probability that the high will be less than 100? And I get, thinking, thinking, 0 0.970. So what that tells me is that this area is 0.970, so the area to the right has to be 0.03. All probabilities add to 1, 
there's a 3% chance we're going to break 100 degrees this coming June based upon previous data. I can also do rainfall. Uh, from Hector Airport, I've got a bunch of data since 1942. Take the data, find the mean, find the standard deviation, and I can tell you what the PDF looks like. Okay, this is actually a Poisson distribution. I'm not going to have negative rainfall, so it's got to start from zero. That means Poisson. But oftentimes we still use a normal distribution, saying it's very close, it'll converge to a normal. Um, and again, this kind of tail right here, here, tail right there tells you that there's something a little bit amiss by using a normal approximation for rainfall. With that, I can do things like, what's the probability that I'll have no rain in the month of June, or the area to the left? Again, going to StatTrek, I've got the mean, got the standard deviation. I want to find the area to the left of zero. Hit Calculate, it gives you 0.048. There's a 4.8% chance we're not going to get any rain this coming June. As mentioned under the central limit theorem, if you have a normal distribution and you add it to a normal distribution, you get a normal distribution. You can see that with the moment generating functions. Suppose I have two normally distributed functions, a and b. When I add the two together, you multiply the moment generating functions. Um, actually, you can evolve in the time domain, multiply in the frequency domain. So here you multiply. Multiply those together. e to the a times e to the b is e to the a plus b. These get added. Grouping terms, you can see that the mean adds and the variance adds. So when you add a normal distribution to a normal, the means add and the variances add. With that, I can do things like this. If I look at the rainfall for the month of June, July, August from Hector Airport, I want to find out what's the PDF for the total rainfall in the summer. Just add the means together, add the variance together. That's the normal distribution for the total rainfall. And what that looks like is this. This is the PDF for the total rainfall in the month of over the summer in Fargo, North Dakota. Now, what we've been looking at are normal distributions that have a mean and a variance that varies with every distribution. That makes things kind of hard because every distribution will be different. There's a thing called the standard normal distribution. What that does is I force the mean to be zero force the standard deviation to be 1. That's actually very, very general. If I take the previous distribution and I had a mean of 0, just add 8.6 to it, I'll have the distribution for rainfall. If the standard deviation is 1, multiply the spread by the actual standard deviation, I'll get the rainfall. So the standard distribution actually is very generic. I can scale it to any distribution. The advantage, though, is once I have a standard normal distribution, I can tell you what the probabilities are. What the standard distribution looks like, it's a nice bell-shaped curve, centered on zero. When I go one standard deviation to the, to the left, two deviations, three deviations, and so on, I can sit there and see what the area is based upon how many standard deviations you are away from the mean. Since it's been standardized, I can tell you precisely what the probabilities are. The area to the left, if I'm one deviation to the left, is 15%. Two deviations left is 2%. Three deviations left, 0.13. Four deviations, five deviations. Or if I want to have a fixed tail size, if I want the tail to be 10%, I need to go left, 1.28 deviations. 5% would be 1.64. 1%, 2.33, so on. So, if we go back and say that the record high for the month of June has a mean and a standard deviation, going back, I want to find out what's the probability, probability I'll break 100. To do this with the normal standard normal curve, I do a thing called find the z-score. Find the distance of 100 from the mean in terms of standard deviations. So 100 is 1.879 standard deviations to the right which means on this curve, I go 1.97 standard deviations to the right, right here. Find the area to the right. And from this table, 1.97 standard deviations is right around here, a little bit less than 0.25. So the area is 0.03. I can also go to StatTrek 
and say I have a standard normal, that's the default, that my z-score is 1.879 standard deviations away from the mean, calculate the probability, it's 0.03. Same answer we got before. In addition, there's also standard normal tables. This is the area to the left as I go so many standard deviations out. Here I was 1.879, so here's 1.88 standard deviations, the area is 0.031. And you can find tables of standard normal distributions, basically calculating the area of the tail when you have the z-score to three decimal places. That is lecture number 15 for ECE 341, random processes, the normal distribution. Again, probably the most important distribution you're ever going to encounter.